I love the M1 Mac Mini, it's now my daily driver, it does all of my production work, but it has one issue, which is the lack of ports. But I've been testing two hubs that solve this issue, and I've got one clear winner. Welcome back to Marketless Reviews, and thank you as always for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, just click below. Now, if you've watched this channel at all, you'll know that I love the M1 Mac Mini. It's superb, it's changed the game for me, but it has one issue, which is the lack of ports. Now, for the uninitiated, you get two USB-C ports or Thunderbolt ports and two USB-A ports, and that's it. Okay, you get an Ethernet port and what have you, but that's your lot. You don't get an SD card, you don't get any more USB-A ports, no more USB-C ports, and it has less ports keep saying the word ports, than the outgoing Intel version. It's not annoying for everyone, and if you don't do a lot of content creation, you don't perhaps have lots of external drives and things attached, then it probably isn't a big deal for you actually, and you can probably get away quite happily with those four ports. But for people like me, and having looked at the comments on my other videos, it's a bit of a downer. Now there's two solutions to this. One of them is that you attach lots of dongles hanging out the back of the Mac Mini, not very elegant, bit of a mess. The second option is to get a hub slash stand. Now, I had no idea these existed until I got the Mac Mini, but they do, and I've picked out two, which I think are great. One is from a company called Satechi, and the other one is from a company called AGP Tech. On the face of it, they look quite similar, but there's a couple of differences which will sway your buying decision one way or the other. A very quick note on data transfer speed. Now, if you know this channel, you know that I don't dive deeply into specs and I don't really pay much attention to benchmarks like it or lump it. So I will tell you the data transfer speeds that these hubs offer, but I won't get into the weeds of what that means for certain types of work, simply because I don't think these USB hubs are designed, for example, to run video editing from. If, like me, you're a video editor, I wouldn't recommend attaching an external, fast external SSD drive to one of these hubs to edit video. I would still do that directly into the back of the Mac Mini or ideally editing off the Mac Mini's own built-in SSD. The point of these hubs is to give you additional connectivity for data transfer really. So whether it be perhaps an SD card that you need to put in there and transfer photos from, or perhaps an external drive where you just need to copy some bits and pieces, or it might even be a USB key that you need for a software license or something. These hubs are fantastic for that, but you will always get the fastest data transfer speeds, either connecting a fast SSD directly to the back of the, the Mac Mini via its USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports, or obviously the internal SSD in the Mac Mini. Now the Satechi is the first Mac Mini hub that I tried. It's $79.99, comes in two different colors, obviously to color match the Mac Mini, and it gives you three USB-A ports, one USB-C port, and they're all five gigabits per second. You also get a headphone jack on the front, and you also get, to my delight, an SD card reader for both standard SD cards and micro SD cards. Now the best thing about the Satechi really is the way it looks and the way it fits around your Mac Mini. It's got this kind of ridge that your Mac Mini sits within and that means it's always perfectly aligned. So you just place your Mac Mini on top of it, done. And the color match is great. It looks, uh, to my eyes, it looks identical to the silver Mac Mini that I have. It's really well made and it just looks great for the money. And it's almost like Apple made it. I mentioned this in my full review of it, which I will link to above, that it, it almost makes your your Mac Mini look like a special edition. And in store wise, it's about as simple as it gets. It has a very short cable at the back, which is permanently fixed to the, to the Satechi, and that just goes into the back of your, your Mac Mini, easy. Now I know there's been some concern over ventilation with this hub, and with these hubs in general, because you are essentially placing your Mac Mini onto something which could potentially stop the airflow. I've not experienced that issue at all. I've used both of these hubs for extended periods of time, done lots of heavy work on my Mac, and it doesn't matter, mainly because that M1 is such an efficient chip. I can't talk for the Intel version. If you're using these hubs for an Intel Mac Mini, then I don't know, you might run into some thermal issues with it. I don't think you will personally, but it's worth doing a little bit more research on that. But certainly if you have an M1 Mac Mini, don't worry about the ventilation thing. It's not gonna damage your Mac Mini. The Mac Mini does not get hot with that M1 chip. But I really like the Satechi. It gives you those ports on the front. It gives you a USB-C port on the front. And it's important to remember, however, that that isn't an additional USB-C. It's actually just an extension of one of the USB-Cs on the back of your Mac Mini. Now that can be a bit of a downside because as mentioned before, the the transfer speed of the Satechi's USB-C port is nowhere near as fast as what you get directly at the back of the Mac Mini. It's still quick, don't get me wrong, and I've, I've done fairly quick file transfers on it, but it's, yeah, it's not the same thing. And for some people, losing that 
direct USB connection on the back of the Mac Mini, which is obviously what this Tetchi plugs into, it's not ideal. I think it's worth it if you just want quick access at the front of your Mac Mini for that USB-C, rather than having to reach around the back, and you don't mind losing some transfer speed, it's great. However, if you really rely heavily on the transfer speed directly out the back of that USB-C, then it's probably not ideal to go for the Satechi. But if you're not fussed about that, it's a great option. It's no frills, it fits the Mac Mini fantastically. It gives you that front-loading SD card slot, which is just a godsend from my perspective. And although these ports aren't supposed to support charging, they do charge stuff. So I think Satechi probably just kind of covering their backs with that. But I've charged my phone from it, I've charged my AirPods Max, I've charged all sorts of USB-C devices, which you're probably not supposed to. So again, I can't be held responsible if you plug them in and something goes wrong. You do that at your own risk, but it has charged things for me quite happily. Now the AGP tech is also $79.99. If we look at the design, first of all, it's quite different to the Satechi in that respect. So whereas the Satechi has that ridge into which your Mac mini conveniently sits and very neatly and squarely sits, you don't get that with the AGP tech. You just put your Mac mini on top of it and it's up to you to line it up. That's a bit annoying really. It's one of those things where if you're pulling things out of the Mac mini fairly regularly or pulling things out of the AGP tech hub quite regularly, you will misalign them. I'm a little bit anal about that sort of stuff. I want to see things nice and flush and what have you. So yeah, the AGP tech gets a bit of a thumbs down on that versus the Satechi. Also, when I bought mine, I could not find the silver version. It does exist 100%. I will put a link in the description to this video, but I had to to get the, I think it's space gray, black, whatever it is. And it looks a bit daft, really. It's like a two-tone Mac mini I've got now. That's my problem. All that aside, it's really well built. It's a very well built piece of kit. The one potential upside of not having that ridge into which the Mac mini sits on the AGP tech is that it might improve ventilation. If you are worried about that, if you have an Intel Mac, for example, this one does, ha there's a gap. There's a visible gap between the hub and the Mac mini. That might help ventilation potentially. So in terms of ports on the AGP tech, again, it's quite different to the Satechi. So you get four USB-A, two of them are USB-3 at five gigabits per second, and the other two are USB-2 at 480 megabits per second. Again, not particularly quick, particularly those USB 2 connections, but they do the job for data transfer. If that's all you need them for, or as I mentioned before, perhaps, you know, software keys and things, it's great for that. And it also has, again, the SD card slots on the front for both standard SD and micro SD. There's no headphone jack, unlike the Satechi. It doesn't bother me really. I don't listen to music directly out of the Mac mini. I use a, a headphone amp for that. But if you do want to connect your headphones easily to your Mac mini without putting them around the back, then the Satechi gives you that, but you don't get the headphone jack with the AGP tech. And there's also no USB-C port on the front. It's all USB-A. But again, that doesn't really bother me because as mentioned earlier on the Satechi, that front facing USB-C port is just an extension of one of the back USB-C ports on the Mac mini. And I found that I didn't really use that front-facing USB-C port on the Satechi at all. So personally, I'd actually rather have those USB-A ports. For me, they're much more useful. It's also worth mentioning that you can connect the AGP tech to the back of the Mac mini either via USB-A or via USB-C, which is pretty handy actually, because it means that you don't have to take up a USB-C port on the back. The biggest difference between these two hubs though, is that the AGP tech has a hidden compartment. And in that hidden compartment, you can put a 2.5 inch SSD. Now in mine, I've put a two terabyte crucial drive in there and it's fantastic. It's immediately given me extra space on my Mac mini without having to have a drive somewhere on the desk. And it seems pretty quick. Again, you're not gonna get blistering transfer speeds for this, but if you want a, a drive for perhaps Time Machine or your own personal backup or just somewhere to put other stuff. I can't think of a better way to do that with a Mac Mini than insert it in within this AGP Tech Hub. One thing to bear in mind with this, however, is the fact that Mac OS may disconnect that drive because it essentially sees it as an external drive. So if your Mac goes to sleep, it might disconnect that drive within the AGP Tech Hub. Now, personally, I don't let my Mac go to sleep, rightly or wrongly, so that doesn't affect me at all. But if you do, there is a piece of software you can get actually that will solve this issue for you. I'll link to that in the description. Now, before I give you my conclusion as to which of these two hubs is my favorite, I wanted to share a really awesome discovery I made recently. Now this video is very kindly sponsored by MacPaw, a superb software developer, and they offer a service called SetApp. And it's brilliant. I genuinely couldn't believe this existed. So for basically for $9.99 a month, you get access to over 200 superb apps, mainly for the Mac, but they, they, you can add iOS devices onto this plan as well for a little bit extra per month. But yeah, for $9.99, you get access to a whole suite of brilliant 
Mac apps. And it includes things like Clean My Mac X, which I'm a massive fan of, Ulysses, which I couldn't live without from my blog, iStat menus, Bartender, AdGuard, ClearVPN, Mars Edit, the list goes on and on. And basically, once you sign up, you can install as many of these apps as you want. There's no limitations to them, no ads. You can use them as long as you want to. It's, it's one of those services where you think, why hasn't someone done this before? The best thing is you can try it for free. I, I think it's great value. I think once you try it, you'll probably want to continue. But if you just want to give it a go, head over to the link in the description and and try out Setup. I really highly recommend it. So which of these two Mac mini hubs would I pick? Well, for me, it's really simple. It's the AGP Tech. And the main reason for that is that integrated SSD enclosure. It's just so useful. And also just the fact that the USB ports in the front are all USB-A, I just used them. I didn't. I never used that USB-C port on the front of the Satechi. Yes, I wish it was the same color as my Mac Mini. I wish it was properly attached to it in some way so I don't have to keep rearranging it, but I can get over that. So I think the decision for you on this comes down to whether or not you could make use of that internal drive. Bear in mind, obviously, that will increase the cost of this because you'll have to buy buy the SSD, but it, you, know, you don't have to spend too much money on that, to be honest, and immediately, gives you more space on your Mac Mini. However, if you are more of an aesthetics person and you like the idea of having a hub which sits perfectly beneath your Mac Mini, the Satechi is unbeatable with that. But the AGP Tech just feels like a better overall package. Now, as much as I love the M1 Mac Mini, I do appreciate that lots of people at the moment are trying to decide between that computer and the brand new 24 inch iMac, which also has an M1 chip in it. So I've put together a little buying guide for this. So if you're trying to decide between those two computers, keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you next time.